Hello everyone. Today's our topic is electric charges and fields, or simply you can say electrostatics. Well, static means something which doesn't change with time, as the name indicates. Electrostatics is a study of forces, fields, and potentials caused by static charges. Let us see a small experiment. Take two glass rods. and rub them with two pieces of silk or wool. After rubbing them with these cloths, bring them close to each other. You will see that both the rods ripple each other. Whereas, if you bring any of these rods near this piece of silk, you see that they attract each other. Now, why does this happen? Experiment have shown that there are two kinds of something which we shall call a charge from now and these two kinds of charges show a definite behavior like uh, like charges repel each other unlike charges attract each other and the two kinds of charges are opposite in nature by saying the two kinds of charges are opposite in nature i mean that they uh, they compensate each other's effect they nullify each other's effect so, basing on these properties, an American scientist named Benjamin Franklin named them as positive and negative charges. And the property which differentiates these two charges is called the polarity of charge. Now, let me explain you. When you rub a glass rod with a piece of uh, silk, the charges get separated uh, in a definite way. Say, all the positive charges get accumulated on the rod and the negative charges get accumulated on the piece of silk and a similar thing happens here so when you bring these two glass rods near each other since they have similar kinds of charges on them they ripple each other and when you bring uh, this glass rod near this piece of silk since they have opposite kinds of charges on them they attract each other Just as I said, like charges repel each other and unlike charges attract each other. Now, this is not a special case with the glass rod or wool. Uh, actually, any two objects which are rubbed to be electrified show the same behavior. Hope everything is clear till now. So, let's move on to our next topic that is conductors and insulators. If you catch a metal rod in your hand and rub it with silk, it won't show any signs of charge builder. But if you do the same thing with a metal rod of wooden or plastic handles, you'll see that it, get, it gets charged. Now, why does this happen? Because wood and plastic are insulators, whereas metal hand, metal and hand or human body are conductors. Those substances which readily allow the passage of electricity through them are called conductors. They have free charges inside them which are nothing but electrons, which can move and uh, they are in turn responsible for this conductance. Now, common examples of uh, conductors are metals, human bodies and also earth. But most of the non-metals like glass, plastic, nylon, wood offer resistance to the passage of electricity through them. These kinds of substances are called insulators. Charges when placed on the surface of a conductor get distributed over the entire surface. With the insulators, it is just the opposite case, that is, charges remain at the same place. When a charged body, when a charged body is in contact with the earth, all the excess charge on the body disappears by causing a momentary current to pass to the ground through the connecting conductor, such as uh, our body. This process of sharing the charges with the earth is called grounding or earthing. Earthing provides a safety measure for electrical circuits and appliances. Let's move on to our next topic. That is induction. Let's do a small experiment. Bring a positively charged rod near one of the spheres, say A. Let the other sphere be B. Now, bring a positively charged rod near it. You'll see that the charges inside the metal distribute in a certain way. 
all the negative charges uh, inside the sphere A get accumulated uh, near the left surface of A, leaving a positively charge, leaving a positive charge on the right surface of A. And the similar thing happens here. The negative charges get accumulated on the left surface of B, leaving the positive charge on the rear surface of B. On the rear surface of B. Now, I don't say that all the charges or all the negative charges in, inside the sphere A get accumulated uh, at the left surface of A, but uh, the process goes on till there is an equilibrium reached under the action of force of attraction of the rod and the force of repulsion due to the accumulated charges. And uh, this process is called induction of charge and it happens almost instantly. The accumulated charges remain on the surface. Uh, till the glass rod is held near the sphere. If the rod is removed, the charges are not acted by any outside force and they get redistributed to their normal original neutral state like this. Separate the spheres, separate the spheres by a small distance while the glass rod is still held near the sphere A uh, as shown. The two spheres are found to be oppositely charged and attract each other. I mean, what I said or what I discussed till now holds true even now. The similar charge distribution happens here also. And in fact, because these two surfaces have opposite charges on them, here there is a force of attraction. Hope everything is clear till now. Let's move on to our next topic. Properties of charges. First property of charges. Charges are additive. Uh, the total charge on the system is the algebraic sum of individual point charges. This property is known as additivity. Example, say uh, a body has one coulomb of charge on it and you add three coulombs of charge to it. So, the net charge on the body becomes four coulombs. Now, C, is the, C stands for coulomb. It's a unit of charge. I'll explain you about it later in detail afterwards. Say, if the charge on a body is minus 2 coulombs and you add 1 coulomb charge to it, the net charge on the body becomes minus 1 coulomb. Conservation of charges. The total charge on the system is always conserved. Now you might have observed that all in the, in the all above experiments, uh, I said that charges transfer get transferred from here to there or get accumulated. But no charge is being created or destroyed. You can never create or destroy a charge. You can only transfer them from one body to other. This property is known as conservation of charge. Quantization of charge. Now, this is important. Let me start at this. All the free charges are integral multiples of a basic unit of charge denoted by E. Q is equal to N E is the mathematical form of uh, this property where n is any integer it may be positive or negative or it may be zero also the basic unit of charge is the charge on an electron by the standard convention charge on an electron is taken negative and therefore charge on electron is negative and proton has the opposite kind of charge so it is positive uh, note that this is just a convention i mean that if the convention was something like uh, charge on electron is positive and charge on proton is negative Still, it really wouldn't have mattered much. There are just two kinds of charges. But since this convention is practiced worldwide, just stick to it. Well, coming to our topic, the fact that electric charge is always an integral multiple of E is termed as quantization of charge. I mean that charge in a body can be 2E or 3E, but you can never say that charge in a body is 1.7. This is not. It can never be so. As I said a couple of minutes ago, the unit of charge is Coulomb in SI system. SI system is the standard international system of units, writing capitals. Uh, the Coulomb is the charge flowing through a wire in one second if the current is one ampere. Ampere is the unit for current. Now don't bother even if you don't understand uh, the last two statements properly because 
We are going to study these things in great detail in coming videos. For now, just note that the value of this basic unit of charge E is 1.602192 into 10 power minus 19 coulombs. This is very small, but very very small actually. A small calculation shows that uh, in a charge of 1 coulomb, there are about 6 into 10 power 18 electrons. Actually, 1 coulomb charge is uh, very huge in magnitude. So, there are some smaller units of charges like uh, 1 micro coulomb, which is nothing but 10 power minus 6 coulombs. And there is also something called as 1 milli coulomb, which is 10 power minus 3 coulombs. Now these are the smaller units of charges. Let's just more let's just solve a small problem. If 10 power 9 electrons move out of the body to another body every second, how much time is required to get a total charge of 1 coulomb on the body? Note here, since electrons move out of the body, so the charge that remains on the body is positive charge. So if 10 power 9 electrons move out of the body in a second, uh, the positive charge accumulated on the body in a second is basic unit of charge E into 10 power 9. So, 1.6 into 10 power minus 10 coulombs of charge is accumulated on the body in a second. So, uh, if you want to find out the time, just divide this 1 coulomb by a charge accumulated in a second. So this gives the time 6.25 into 10 power 9 seconds are needed for the body to get 1 coulomb of charge on it. Actually this is approximately equal to 198 years. Don't get scared by seeing this big number because uh, for all practical applications uh, the rate of charge transfer is far greater than this 10 power 9. So, it happens very fast, actually. Our next topic is very, very important. It's called Coulomb's Law. Let's deal with this in our next video. Thank you. Bye.